G'day and welcome back to another episode of Tommy's Tune-Ups. On this episode, I'm gonna show you how to install a camshaft. So really easy how to install this. What we're gonna be doing is grabbing our assembly lube and we're just going to be applying a little bit on each of the mating surfaces of both the cam lobes and also where the bearing's gonna be running. So every surface from this end all the way down to the middle to every single lobe and even uh, the lobe if we're gonna be using the mechanical fuel pump. If not, then just up this end here. Now, like I said before in previous episodes, it is just going to wear off once the engine's running, dissipate, and then go in with the engine oil. So once it's lubricated, all you're gonna be doing is just running your finger around there just to smear it all over the, each of the surfaces. That way, it'll go on there nice and smoothly and help with the aid of the installation of the camshaft. All right, so once she's lubricated, time to install it. So this is an A-series engine we're going to be installing it in. This is quite easy, especially because it is out of the car. Some V8s are quite easy as well to be able to install and remove. But this car in particular, you could probably do when it's even in the vehicle. So just line it up, guide it all the way through. The good thing about this is I do have the sump off. So if it's not going to line up properly all the way down to the very end, I can just stick my hand up from underneath and just help guide it. All right, and she's in. Now, it will find its own sort of recess home, not only at this end with the thrust plate, but also on the other end where the oil pump is. All right, so next part of this is going to be actually installing the oil pump. So let's get that prepared and let's get it installed. So before we get onto the oil pump, let's just talk about what these are. These are cam followers. These are ones that Graham Russell specified and are Kent Cam Competition Valve Train Cam Followers. So. Once again, a little bit of assembly lubricant or even engine oil, and they just slide directly down in behind there and sit on top of the camshaft. Each engine is different, like I said before, and it is worthwhile noting that when you install these, some engines need to be upside down for them to go in, others can go up vertically. Once you've installed one, make sure you install the rest of them all the way along. All right, so next part of the build is to install the oil pump gasket and the oil pump. As you can see, I'm using the upgraded available pump gasket that is available at Minisport. You can check it out on my channel, all the reviews I've done, and check it out in the link in the description. So that'll go in there. This just needs to go in dry, so you don't need to fit any lubricant or oil or anything to it. It will literally just go in dry. So we want to make sure that we line it up with the three bolt holes. There's two at the bottom and then one at the top. Now, also before you install an oil pump, make sure you check the tolerances as well. Check out the video on my mate's channel on how to do that. Beforehand, make sure you either prime it with oil, so pull it apart and um, check it and then prime it with oil um, or Vaseline like I generally do, or you can just pump some in here, spin it around until it's pumped it all the way through. That'll just ensure that it primes the pump and is ready to go the minute that you turn it. Also running this gasket is also gonna help with priming the pump a little bit sooner, but it's also advised that when you start an engine for the very first time, leave the spike plugs out, crank it over until you get oil pressure on a gauge and then reconnect everything and then start it up. Never fire up an engine that is completely dry. Also, before you install it, make sure that the keyway lines up with the slot on the back of the camshaft. Now, this one says tappets need to be set to 12 thou. All right, so three bolts. Once again, start them by hand. Never use a power tool to start them in case you damage any threads. Now, as you can see behind me on the bench as well, I've also moved the Morris out of the garage simply because it's currently out getting painted. So depending when you're watching this, it is currently getting painted and won't be back for a good couple of weeks. So we're just gonna continue on doing the build whilst that's getting painted at the moment. Once we get the engine and the rest of the gearbox sorted, we should be right to pretty much skip forward and start the reassembly process. All right, grab your torque wrench, and in our case, we're gonna tighten these up to nine foot-pounds, so not a great deal of torque. We're just gonna go around, double-check them all once we've tightened them, and then go and mark them to show that we've done it, and we've known, both audibly, via video, and with a marking that we've actually tightened them. All right, so before I mark them, I'm just gonna give the bolts a bit of a wipe, that way they've got no oil or debris on there, 
and it's not going to come off as soon as we apply the texture. There we go. All right, so now the oil pump's done, we're going to install the rear sandwich plate. Once we've done that, we're going to call the episode, then we're going to work on the front of the engine in the next episode. All right, so we got our rear upgraded timing plate, and we have the little cup as well. So that needs to get fitted inside there before we go any further. Now that's what seals it, because there is a little hole down under here. So obviously this entire chamber on the outside here is lubricated and then is sealed by the gasket that goes on the inside of here. So this one sits directly up there, just like that. Now, there is a gasket that goes between this rear plate and the housing. So, what we need to do is two things. One, we need to install the gasket, and two, we need to work out which bolts are actually holding this on and aren't going to limit us to tightening up the bell housing bolts when we go to reinstall the gearbox, but also torque all of these bolts to the specified torque setting. So just by looking at this, having it pre-fitted, you can see all the bolts around the outside here, which will likely go on through the bell housing. And then the ones on the inside here are the ones that we need to actually tighten up. So we're going to grab our bolts, we're going to grab the gasket, we're going to fit it in behind there, and then we're going to tighten it all down, and then we should be right to torque it all up, call the episode, and then start moving on. All right, so we have our gasket and it sits directly up there just like that. So what I'm actually gonna do is install all the bolts that hold all of these on. And then when we go to reinstall the gearbox later, I'm just gonna remove the ones that we don't need when we line it up. That way I know exactly which ones are actually designed to hold this gasket on in place and which ones are designed for the bell housing. So now we're aware which way it goes and how it's gonna be sealing, what we're gonna be doing is getting this uh, sealant, which is the aviation form the gasket, and we're just gonna be running it around the outside of it. Now, because you're not gonna see it, it's not gonna be too detrimental that you make this thing absolutely perfect, but try and get it as good as you can. Any excess, make sure you wipe it off when you're finished. So I'm just gonna wipe this all the way around the outside. Yes, it's not super pretty, and I'm sure there's people at home saying you should probably do it a different way, and it's not right, blah, 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 I know. But, you know, each their own. Essentially, I'm just gonna run it around the outsides where I know the gasket goes, and then we can come back and clean it up with a bit of brake cleaner or even a bit of wax and grease remover. All right, now the gasket sealer is on. Gonna reinstall this, a line up there, and it's also got a dowel down here as well. So as I said, it doesn't matter that it's not absolutely perfect, it's not gonna be the end of the world. It's got a little bit of excess, we can always come back and clean it up. Now we're gonna do the same thing again and just cover this entire surface in sealant anywhere where the gasket surface is. Alright, now we have it on there, we can then go reinstall the sandwich plate. So just line it up nice and carefully. Now this is an upgraded sandwich plate. You don't have to run this one. We decided to run this one simply because uh, we are upgrading the engine and it's gonna cause more stress with a, um, a standard um, flex plate being on there. So we decided to upgrade to give it something with a little bit more rigidity. All right, so once you've got all the bolts in, we're then just gonna tighten them up to 28 foot-pound. Now, once you've tightened them once, we're gonna go back over and retension them. This time, we're gonna use the marker on them after we tension them. All right, well, that's it for this episode. Hope you guys learned something on how to install a camshaft and oil pump and the rear timing case on a Morris Miner. So this is a pretty simple and straightforward method. Make sure as well, when you go to install the oil pump, you always pull it apart regardless of how new it is, whether it's been built straight from the factory, whether it's been sitting in a box for 15 years, always check the oil pump clearances like in the video listed above on my good mate, AC Dodds channel. Guys, there's plenty more to come. Next episode, we're gonna put the flywheel on, the clutch assembly, and probably even mount the gearbox before moving to the front side of the engine to do all of the timing and the rocket gear at the top. So like always, guys, stay COVID safe. We'll see you right here on another episode of Tomo's Tune-Ups. <laughs>